Welcome back to another amazing video, this time demonstrating how the world was mapped before satellites. Before watching this video, please subscribe to our channel Interloop and click that bell icon. Accurate surveying techniques were used to create ancient global maps, which measured the positions of various objects by calculating the distance and angles between each point. Take a look at this map. It's Ptolemy's map of the known world, based on his work The Geography from the second century. Obviously, it's not flawless. In fact, to our current eyes, it almost appears like an American druid. But you can see that people recognized roughly how the coastlines of the areas surrounding them were shaped, even in ancient times. They employed a series of ropes and chains cut to predetermined lengths as surveying tools, and they measured their angles with physical or magnetic compasses. They used magnifying glasses or miniature telescopes attached to the compass to measure angles between points that were further apart. The original maps were created in a similar manner to how they are now, by utilizing the surveying or triangulation methods. Even satellites employ the same basic concepts of triangulation to create maps. But how did the Greeks, Romans, and other pre-satellite civilizations figure out how the world and its land masses were formed, and how did they create these maps? Maps are, without a doubt, among humanity's best inventions. They come in all kinds and sizes, and they inform us not just about the world or universe around us, but also how to traverse it, how the world is doing, and how we thought about it at a given time. Well, let's put ourselves in the shoes of the ancient Greeks and try to figure out how they mapped the world they knew. So first, where do you start? Well, maybe your first instinct will be to take your map and drawing utensils and sail around all the Mediterranean coasts. And you could do that for shorter distances, but for longer voyages, not only would this be unnecessary for getting to your destination, but there are also a lot of reasons why this would be a bad idea. You could still survey the terrain around you, and there were a variety of methods for doing so. Triangulation, as many of you map men fans among us will recognize, or the groom for creating long straight Roman roads, or rope stretchers measuring the flooding of the Nile in ancient Egypt were among the methods and devices used. With travelers' accounts, navigators' reports, literature, regional maps, and many other sources, many an ancient cartographer made these world maps by simply collecting and compiling all this data, often barely leaving their hometowns. Anaximander, a philosopher from the 6th century BC, is credited for having made one of the first maps of the world. Anaximander, on the other hand, believed that the globe was centered on the Aegean Sea, encircled on all sides by the sea, and that it all rested atop a great column. Eratosthenes was a Greek geographer, mathematician, poet, astronomer, and music theorist who was born in Cyrene in 276 BC, and famously confirmed what Pythagoras and Aristotle had previously theorized, that the Earth was truly round. Knowing that the bottom of a well in the southern Egyptian city of Syene, not to be confused with Cyrene, which is near the modern Libyan city of Benghazi, would be illuminated in the sun twice a year. As the sun passed directly over it, Eratosthenes measured the angle the sunlight hit a well in Alexandria at the same time. Syene was under the subsolar point, and using geometry measured the rough circumference of the Earth, and got it almost entirely right. We may use GPS, but we've had our own space-based techniques for determining our location on Earth for thousands of years, and all we had to do was look up. Some of the first navigational maps weren't even maps of the Earth, but rather maps of prominent stars. Move over Star Trek and Star Wars because there's a new player in town that's actually been around for thousands of years. Star Charts Navigators can use anything in the sky that appears at regular intervals such as the sun, moon, other planets or stars, and the constellations they make. It's actually fairly simple to determine your latitude. 
It's essentially just a small square piece of wood and a knotted string in this 9th and 10th century Arab invention. The concept is that as you get closer to the equator, Polaris will appear closer to the horizon, and as you get farther north, Polaris will appear higher up. Using the string to record the measurements, you measure how far you need to move the board away from your face for the bottom to contact the horizon and the top to touch Polaris while holding the string in your teeth. Hipparchus advocated measuring longitude in the 2nd century BC by collecting the periods when different regions observed solar eclipses. In theory, this was a good idea, but with the timekeeping technology available at the time, it didn't appear to go very far. The Fortune Isles, then the westernmost point of the land known as the Roman Empire, were defined by Ptolemy as the prime meridian. The shape of the known world was okay, but he drastically underestimated the size of the globe. That's not to say that the Romans didn't have amazing distance measuring devices. They did, but it's not like you can just draw a straight line over the known world and figure out how big Eurasia is. We hope you enjoyed our video. If you did like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks!